Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number three of When Harry Met Ani podcast. My name is Emily. This is a podcast mostly about knitting and crocheting. I've made it to the third episode, so if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking with me. We have one friend who says that you can tell if a show is good, but only after you've given it three episodes worth of your time. So if you like this episode and the other two, thanks for sticking around and uh, hopefully there will be more in the future that um, you'll enjoy. And if you are a new viewer, thanks for tuning in. Um, As I said, my name is Emily. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I have two cats named Harry and Onyx, hence the title of my podcast, When Harry Met Ani. Um, I'm also an attorney, I have type 1 diabetes, and I eat ketogenic. So I discuss some of those other topics in addition to knitting and crocheting, but this is primarily a podcast about knitting and crocheting. Uh, If you'd like to find me on Ravelry, my handle there is mmeister, that's E-M-M-E-I-S-T-E-R, and find me on Instagram at whenharrymetani. Ani is spelled O-N-N-I-E. And if you like my podcast, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Thank you for those that have. And without further ado, um, I'm going to get into From the Vault. So this week, I have to share with you a crochet project. I made this uh, keyboard cozy for my fiance Logan. Um, it is by, it is a pattern called Nook or Kindle Case by Mandy Sabrowski. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I made modifications to it because as you, as you can tell, this is not the size of a Nook or a Kindle. Um, but it was nice because I had the keyboard with me to make the case. So this is the size of the keyboard. And um, yeah, so I'd recommend if you do end up making projects um, that are cases that you have the device that's going to go in it on hand so you can, so you can continue to measure and, and make sure that um, it's coming out the correct size. So again, here's the cozy. It's just your simple, um, I knit it all in one piece going down and then I folded it over onto itself and then I sewed, um, I mean I turned it inside out and then I sewed, or I I think I just stitched with, um, just like a whip, whip stitched each side. So one side and then the second side and then, um, I was looking at my project notes on Ravelry and I added two buttons that you'll see that on the pattern and then I made these button holes um, and to do this to do the button holes I chain three and then skip three stitches and that made a nice sized buttonhole for my cozy um, And I made this from some scrap yarn that Logan picked out. It was Red Heart Super Saver Multis slash Prints. And the color is 992 Shaded Browns. Um, And I used one and a half stains of it. Now it came out really nice. It's a little stretched out from having a keyboard in it. Um, But... Yeah, I really like this one, and um, good for Kindles, keyboards, I'm sure you can make a laptop case out of this. Um, it'd be a nice gift. Um, so made that made this probably, I have to check Ravelry, but I want to say maybe like three, three years ago. Uh, so yeah, from the vault. So I don't have any finished objects this week. I'm a little disappointed because I had two days off of work, not including July 4th, and I really wanted to finish my crochet Hobbs project for my 
friend uh, who I made Hobbs for her wedding, and by the time she gets it, it'll be almost her one-year wedding anniversary, Uh, but I did not finish Hobbs, and I also really, really was working hard on my Elfrith's Alley cowl and had hoped to finish and block that, but that also did not happen. But the good news is, is that I have a new cast on and I was able to work quite a bit on all three of the works in progress I have. So I'll just jump into works in progress and show you the status of all of the projects that I have. So I'll start with the new cast on. Um, I cast on a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks. I've never knit this pattern before. This is actually the second sock ever I've made. I showed my first pair of socks on episode number one, Finished Objects, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, But I I know this is an extremely popular sock pattern on Ravelry. It's free. It is by Erica Luter. And uh, tons and tons of projects, probably like over 5,000 projects from this um, pattern. The yarn is Zen Yarn Garden in their Serenity 20. The colorway is Love Hurts. Um, really nice. I mean, you know, I think maybe this pattern would have would look best with a solid with a solid color. However, I just fell in love with the with the uh, with the yarn and wanted to make this pattern so you know right yarn right pattern I am doing it on double pointed needles and if you watched episode two um, I had talked about my disaster with the loops and threads steel needles that were like nine inches long so I ordered I think you pronounce it Chiago I said Chiago I don't know Chiago that sounds more um, that sounds better. So I had ordered Chiago. I think they're one and a half size, whatever the pattern calls for I'm using. Um, and they arrived and then I immediately cast these on once I got them in the mail. And this one, this particular project, um, I'm not, I'm just doing it at home. I'm knitting the sock at home. I did take it out once and put it in a plastic pack, but, um, I have it in my yarn bowl. This was a gift. Um, I believe it's from Knit Picks. So it's just a nice wooden bowl and it sits next to me on the couch or on the coffee table while I'm watching some TV. So yeah, that's my Hermione's Everyday Sock. And oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I'm on the leg portion. And to make this leg portion, it's from here to here, it's a repeat of four different rows. So I had to keep track myself. So I made this little like cheat sheet. So it's just like something I thought was a good idea. Okay. First round is knit three, purl one. Second round is knit. And then third round is knit one, purl one, knit two, which ends, which turns into knit three, purl one after you get that first little um, piece done. And then the last uh, row is knit, and then you repeat that 18 times. So if you see on my little paper, I have um, 18 repeats, and I'm on the seventh repeat. So I have, I'm roughly a third of the way done with the leg. So I'll be anxious to see how that all turns out. Work in progress number two is my Annalise Wrap Shawl, a pattern by Loop Yarn in Philadelphia. Uh, This is what it looks like, or will look like. Um, Loop, as I've mentioned, makes different kits for this project. Um, I have chosen the Rock Candy Kit. And it is made from Knitted Wit Victory Fingering 100% Merino Wool. And they give you eight colors, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, and purple. Um, It's done on 24-inch U.S. size 6 circular needles. 
and when it's done it's going to be 16 inches by 72 inches blocked and everything um, so I am currently my goal was before my next podcast to move on to the the color after the color I was on for episode two and I did that but just barely so um, this is it so far So I've gone through the pink, the red, and the orange, and now I am doing the orange to yellow fade. So this is the yellow, really pretty. What I love about all of these yarns is that they really carry through the tones from the previous color, and that happened for the pink to the red and the red to the orange, and now the orange to the yellow. So, you know, you can kind of see that this is picking up on some of these lighter tones in the orange. It's really great. Um, and I've been carrying my yarn, so I'll be getting back into that with the uh, fade portion. And this is just, the, the yarn is lovely. I've never knit with knitted wit, and it's, it's interesting when you're going, when you're working on multiple yarns, for multiple projects you can really feel the difference when you pick one up and put one down like when I when I'm working on the socks the needles are so tiny but um, the yarn is so soft I think there's cashmere in that yarn um, and then when I work on my Elfritz alley cowl it's on it's on larger size needles and the yarn is thicker it's a little bit of a different texture it's Brooklyn Tweed um, and then this pattern like is on a medium sized needle but like the yarn is just so soft and extremely easy to work with yeah look at that fade that is just i really like that and you can see the orange especially at the end there i mean that really brought some yellows out so that that'll be really nice fade from the orange to the yellow i'm a little more concerned about the yellow to the to yell to the green um, I think that'll be a little stark and then from the green to the teal um, and especially the picture well can't really see it through the picture so never mind so that is my Annalise wrap shawl and loop had other kits available not just this rock candy kit so if you're at all interested, I'd recommend checking out their website for a kit. The whole kit, uh, the pattern, and the eight, eight skeins of yarn was $112. So I think that's a good deal, especially because when I finished um, a skein, I have a considerable amount left. Um, so it's definitely going to be put to good use in another project. Last but not least is my Elfritz Alley Cowl. I did quite a bit of work on this guy. Um, I am almost done. I am almost done with this pattern and then I'll get to more of this ribbing to finish it off. And for the ribbing portion, you switch to smaller needles. So I really, really tried to finish this, but um, I found that one row in the round for this pattern, for this project, takes me about 15 minutes. So I have about 20 rows left total. So you can do the math, that's about, I think that's five hours left. Um, I just, I did a lot of work on it, but I did not finish it. Um, this is a pattern, also by Loop Yarn, and it I'm using Brooklyn Tweed, Arbor in their wreath colorway and I'm on my second skein. Um, but I only have this much left so I don't think I'll be using very much at all of the third skein. This yarn is DK weight and it is 100% American Targi wool. So I think that is it. That's all I have this week for works in progress, so I'm going to move on to a segment that I call Prime Time. 
just sharing things that I've bought um, mostly over the past week but this week I have um, a I have yarn that I bought probably a year ago at this point that I have I'm inspired to use finally um, but I thought I'd talk about that a little bit so I bought on this website called mass drop um, which is a web it's like it's like an online community that mostly services people in like tech um, computers like like niche hobbies I would say like they have like stuff for camping they have stuff like really like for people who are into um, writing instruments and calligraphy they have uh, headphones um, like an audiophile community so head headphones and speakers um, so I was really excited because they added a knitting community and they also have a quilting community they aren't very active um, but how it works is they'll send out a product and usually they're like pretty discounted from whatever you would from how much you would get it um, from the manufacturer or retailer and if a certain number of people agree to buy the product then um, they have what's called a drop and then the people who agreed to buy the product are charged for the product and the product ships um, so on mass drop through the knitting community they were offering patents color wool so I got four skeins of this and it is it is bulky weight 100% wool this is the ocean colorway um, and one skein is 85 grams 90 yards so I went on Ravelry and I did an advanced pattern search and typed in the yarn and how many yards I had and did some more filter filtering and I came across a pattern I really liked called the bandana shawl so I think I am going to make that out of this bulky yarn and it was cute it wasn't it was kind of a cross between a cowl and a scarf um, it was like a little like maybe like a shawl like a cowl slash shawl um, so it was like drapey in the front and um, I'll try to put a picture here although I haven't put pictures in videos before we'll see how that goes um, but in any event I link everything um, or provide the names of most things that I mention in the um, notes beneath the video um, on YouTube so just scroll down and um, you can you can see what I'm talking about Another item I have to share for prime time is the sweater I'm wearing. So I am wearing a llama sweater. I spotted this baby at Ann Taylor and it was $20 and I knew I needed to have it. I don't really know what else there is to say about this sweater other than it has llamas all over it. I think that is probably enough. So moving on, <laughs> um, I have one more item um, and I bought two sets of Shiagu um, size, I think they're size 1.5 knitting needles, double pointed knitting needles to knit socks. And I have been knitting my Hermione's Everyday Sock with these and I really, really like them. Um, so I have uh, Shiagu Ba I guess they're bamboo yeah bamboo double points and then I bought the red lace circular needles and shared those last week and I will be knitting toe up socks two at a time magic loop on those needles so I'll let you know how those go I should be casting those socks on this week and um, working on those so hopefully I'll have a work another work in progress to share next week with my um, toe up socks. I'm going to move on to a segment that I call office gossip. So in office gossip, I talk about the progress of my craft room slash office behind me and in front of me. Um, most for the most part, my office is 
this way and the fun stuff is back here so I have talked a little bit last week about my sewing machine and I have my yarn board which I'll probably talk more about in a different episode um, got the futon so just like a nice cozy place to work and play unfortunately I have not I still have not hung my Andy Warhol shoe puzzle um, I'm still just figuring out where things are gonna go I really just need to start putting stuff on the walls but I have a couple other prints that are gonna go up um, and I don't really have anything to share in terms of setup and things that I've added since last week there really hasn't been a lot going on um, with the craft room slash office but I thought I would talk a little bit about um, a book that I got so you know this could have gone into prime time but I'm kind of I'm lumping it into office gossip um, because I got this kind of cool book that is um, I mean I I hadn't heard of it before but it is called mindful knitting so uh, I'm not sure how many of you are into mindfulness and meditation I myself really have not um, delved into it at all. I had the Headspace app for maybe two days and just it, I just could not get into it. So I think maybe, um, I might need a little, a little different of an introduction to mindfulness than, um, like an app that has you do meditative practice for 10 minutes a day. That just wasn't working for me. I think maybe, you know, they say like you should really do, your meditation at the same time of day and that try not to do it at night so you don't want to fall asleep um you just need to do it if things come into your mind you just have to let them pass through uh but it just i i don't know i wasn't i didn't find i was benefiting from it um and i didn't i didn't stick with it but i really thought this book was kind of cool it's a very short book and it is very text heavy but it does have 10 patterns in it and um, I get, I'll, I'll read you a little bit from the back. Um, so it is by an author named Tara, jo Tara John Manning, and she is a practicing Buddhist. And um, this book advertises that it will bring inner serenity to your knitting practice and everyday activities. Fully appreciate the objects you knit, making each more significant and satisfying and connect to others by donating to charities, creating gifts, or knitting with a group. I love all of those principles and all of those ideas, so I'm definitely going to give this book a read, and perhaps the patterns will strike my fancy as well. I mean, she has baby sweater, um, there was a couple dishcloths, there's scarf, um, there's a tea cozy, uh, there's like a vest in here. Oh, look at this like baby, this cute baby set. Oh, it's, I think that's cute. So I guess it's mindful to knit, knit a baby set for someone else. Here's a couple others. Cable cardigan jacket. I don't know if that one's really me. Scarf. There's some cool stuff in here. Um, I bought this book at uh, this flea and farmer's market called Saturday's Market that we have in Middletown. And I went, I went on Saturday morning with my dad and uh, one of the vendors there had like tons of patterns, like sewing patterns, craft patterns. She had a table, like a table full of uh, knitting booklets and she had embroidery stuff quilting stuff sewing stuff and then she had like books like knitting books and um, quilting books and all kinds of crafts craft books and um, fiber arts things so this one I walked away with I thought it was a good buy for three bucks um, and I thought it would it would match nicely with this book that I have and still haven't read called The Anxious Lawyer. <laughs> so um, one of our retired partners at work was very, very into mindfulness and medita meditation, and he suggested this book by uh, Gina Cho and Karen Guilford. And from what I understand, he has a relationship with one or both of these uh, women who wrote this book. 
and um, it's it's a quick read so maybe I will give both Mindful Knitting and The Anxious Lawyer a shot. Uh, I really enjoy reading so I think that these are both great additions to my library and perhaps they will help me uh, better introduce myself to the practice of mindfulness and meditation. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, I thought I'd also just mention that I did start the book that I got as a gift for my birthday called Carry On, Carry On Warrior. I'm only about 30 pages in, so I'll reserve any kind of review until I'm a little bit farther, but so far so good. I mean, uh, the author is a really great writer, so I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying her story so far. I'm going to move on to my last and final segment, which I still do not have a name for. It is just so random that I just, I don't know what an appropriate name for it would be. Um, I have talked about pulled pork. Uh, last week I talked about the book that I just mentioned, Carry On Warrior, that I received as a birthday gift. And this week I thought I would talk about my Apple Watch. <laughs> so, um... I have a Series 1 Apple Watch, and as I mentioned at the top of the episode and at um, and, and during my other episodes, I have type 1 diabetes, so I just thought that it w- might be interesting to share with you that um, technology has come a long way since I was first diagnosed back in the early 90s, and I now wear a continuous glucose monitor that reads my blood sugar every five minutes. Um, and and uh, the sensor itself, or the technology itself that reads my blood sugar is on my body, but through Bluetooth, it sends a signal to what is called a receiver, and the receiver then displays my blood sugar. So you can have a number of devices that are used as the receiver. So I I wear an insulin pump that delivers insulin, um, but I also was sent by the company a receiver but you can also use your cell phone and download the app um so it's really nice uh that they have an app for the continuous glucose monitor system what's even better is they have an apple watch app so i have it displayed on my watch face what my blood sugar is anytime i'm wearing the watch which is actually so much more convenient than any than I think people would realize. I, a lot of times I'm wearing dresses and I can't necessarily see my insulin pump. So it's nice to have it on the watch. I really, really love having the watch for that reason. Um, another really nice thing about the watch is the um, exercise. If you're if you do any kind of exercise, it really motivates you. Um, you have these like activity rings that you set goal that you can set goals for yourself um, for how many hours a day you want to stand, how many uh, minutes of exercise you want to do, and how many calories you want to burn. And at, and throughout the day, as you're wearing the watch, you can see the rings close. So it's it's a really great um, like check for yourself. Um, and there's other things that I find helpful, like, like it reminds you to stand if you're, if you've been sitting for a long time and, um, you haven't stood in that in the last hour, uh, so the watch will just kind of, will buzz and just say, you know, take a stand break, stand up, move around a little bit. And the other thing that I like is, um, related to activity, but, uh, it is really great for tracking exercise. So today I went, I haven't gone on a run in a really long time, but I went for a run and I wore my watch. I had my Bluetooth headset. I carried my phone with me, um, but I was tracking my activity all on the watch through the watches app. And you can um, like just kind of press a couple things and just say, okay, I'm gonna go exercise. I'm doing an outdoor run and I'm just gonna do it in open mode, so it's just, it's not gonna stop me after a certain uh, mileage or a certain number of minutes I've been exercised. I'm just gonna go and stop it when I want to. Um, So those are a couple of the features that I really like having on the Apple Watch. Other than that, I I was really kind of hesitant about getting an Apple Watch 
uh, just because like I'm already so connected via devices. I'm, I'm old, I always have my phone on me. Um, I have an iPad. I have a, I have a laptop, um, computer at work, computer at home. And you're, I'm just always connected, I feel. So it was just another, another plug into um, being connected that I didn't really know if I needed. But I think the reasons I like it, I haven't found with any other device. That's all I have for this week of When Harry Met Ani. Um, thanks for sticking with me. And I should let you know that it is actually late at night. It is 11 15 PM on Sunday. So I am going to head to bed soon. And I think this podcast, if you watch it, will be up on Monday. Um, but anyway, thanks for tuning in for the midnight edition episode three. All right. Well, um, hope you have a great week and I will catch you next week for episode four.